Lord of Bathnot, Redrum. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, the Post Office has powers to bring a private prosecution which fall under Section 6.1 of the Prosecution of Offences Act 1985 are not specific to that company. They have the same right as any other person, whether an individual or a company, to bring a private prosecution. My Lords, I am grateful to my noble friend for that answer. Um, last year, the Post Office had to settle litigation brought by sub-postmasters, 555 of them, uh, at a cost to the, the Post Office of nearly £60 million. And the Court of Appeal described the Post Office as treating sub-postmasters in capricious or arbitrary ways which would not be unfamiliar to a mid-Victorian factory owner. Uh, and the judge at first instance held that a post office director had set out to mislead him. How can such an organisation possibly conduct its own prosecutions when it cannot command the trust of the courts or indeed of the country? My noble friend raises challenging points. The first that I must stress is that the leadership of the post office got it wrong got it very badly wrong, and as a consequence of those actions, people have experienced unfortunate situations. That has changed. There has been a change in culture, a new chief executive, a new recognition that the old ways of doing things cannot go on. And that is why the minister responsible in my department, Kelly Tolhurst, now has quarterly meetings with the National Federation of Sub-Postmasters as a way of ensuring that there is a better relationship with those who are at the sharp end of the post office. My Lords, this is uh, far more than unfortunate. This is a shocking story of obfuscation, cover-ups and downright abuse of sub-postmasters, the face of arguably the most trusted brand in this country by the most senior people running it. And yet they were able to do this because they had the power to conduct their own prosecutions with no independent assessment of the case for the defence or the prosecution. So can I join the postmasters themselves in asking the government to review this and other issues that this sorry case has thrown up with a full, independent public inquiry? Yeah, yeah. 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 The individuals affected are indeed the face of the post office. They are in towns and villages up and down the land. The situation that arose was unacceptable and the courts have shown that to be unacceptable. There does need to be manifest change in the way the post office does business and there needs to be a recognition that that is not acceptable as a way going forward. We will be doing things differently. We will be bringing in a new national framework to ensure that the situation of the past cannot be repeated. This is a time for us to bring about the real change which is required right now. My Lord, I am... When I was law officer, we brought most of governmental and quasi-governmental organisations uh, who did prosecute under the supervision of the Attorney General. Would that not be an appropriate thing to do in this case? I suspect it will be quite some time before the Post Office embarks upon another adventure of this sort for very many obvious reasons. The situation we need to recognise here is that there are a number of manifest failures that led to this situation and they need to be understood and they are being understood by the new culture inside the post office. The reality remains right now the post office got it wrong and for that there needs to be a serious change and that is why again at the heart of that must not just be profits but also recognising the role of the sub-postmasters themselves. My Lords, uh, as the Minister responsible for this at the time, I was very uneasy because it involved claims of dishonesty by apparently honest citizens. And I therefore advised the Post Office to take outside legal counsel to try and get at the truth. Now we have reached the present stage. What arrangements for compensation have or are still being or will be made to those affected? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My noble friend is right to draw attention to this. There was a settlement of nearly 60 million, as my, right, uh, my honourable friend said at the outset, which will be for those who brought the, the, the class action itself. There will also need to be individual criminal examination as well for those who have experienced the sharpest end of the law. I cannot comment upon these matters, but I recognise how important they are to bring about the justice required. My Lords, I am 
a number of points to, to pick up on this. I'll just try and focus on the, the £60 million. Um, Could the Noble Order Minister uh, give us any indication how much of the £60 million the sub-postmasters themselves um, will be receiving? Because my understanding is that, unlike many other cases, the legal fees and one of the reasons for the settlement has to come out of that £60 million, um, and I am not clear exactly how much the sub-postmasters themselves um, will be receiving. So some clarification on that, I'm sure, would be very welcome um, to all. The simple answer to that question is not enough. The reality is that perhaps only a fraction of the money which has been won in this court case will actually end up in the pockets of the sub-postmasters. It may indeed be around £12 million out of the £60 million, in itself a shocking realisation. That, unfortunately, is the answer to your question. And Lords, what action is the Government going to take against those people running the post office when all this was going on? Um, have they just been moved to another job and got promotion, or are they actually going to have some action taken against them? Because people have died, <coughs> committed suicide, and lost their businesses, as other, no other noble lords have said. There is a new chief executive, there is a new regime in place. As to the individuals who were in positions of power during that point, I cannot comment because I simply do not have the answer. I recognise the anger, however, he brings to the question, and I recognise that that will be shared by the House today. My Lords, the Department, my Lords, the Department, the Department has a representative on the Board of Directors. What, what is his role exactly? We have a non-executive director who is responsible for representing the department and for rep representing the government. His role now has clearly evolved from what it would have been perhaps a more passive approach in the past to a much more active approach going forward. We have to have a much stronger view about how we manage this area, both through the chief executive, through the uh, chairman and also through the non-executive director with responsibility both for governance and clear adherence to the responsibilities of the board itself. I know a large corporate organisation like the Post Office can always point to the fact that it's changed its ways and things will be better in the future. For some of these people, they've lost their lives. £12 million compensation doesn't seem enough. And in fact, no financial compensation would seem enough. Is the Minister satisfied that these people are getting due recompense? Yeah. I don't think those who have lost their lives could possibly get due recompense throughout this process, no matter what the answer would have been. The situation is very clear that during a significant period in the history of the post office, wrongdoing took place. They got it wrong and they've admitted indeed that this is changing now to try and bring it about. I don't believe we can compensate adequately for those who have lost their lives.